What's up my piano friends? Zach Evans here and today I'm going to show you the perfect morning routine for piano beginners. A 10 minute per day simple but powerful piano workout plan that will help you develop effortless, confident and beautiful playing on the keys. Even if you have a crazy busy schedule and not much time to practice. Exercise 1 is a simple but powerful exercise to help you develop your piano technique. Exercise 2 will help you quickly learn chords for actual songs on autopilot. And exercise 3 is a fun drill to help your improv skills even if you never improvised in your life. And stick around to the end to get the 5-7 motivation method goal sheet to help keep you white hot motivated to practice every single day. Even if you've had trouble sticking to a consistent practice schedule in the past. All right, I'm excited and ready to go. Let's get started. All right, so the first section of this morning routine is the five finger drill technique exercise. It only takes about two minutes to complete, but it's a very powerful exercise that turns sloppy, choppy playing into smooth, even tone. And at the same time, we'll solve any weak pinky issues you might think you have. All right, so the exercise itself is pretty simple. We start with our thumb on C, and then we simply play up to our pinky and back down twice. So it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Then we simply move our thumb up one note to D and do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Then we move our thumb up to E, do the same thing, and so on and so forth until we hit our thumb on this C. Now the notes are not the most important part about this exercise. The important part is the form and the wrist motion to use and let me show you what I mean. Now if your fingers are nice and curved like this and you start playing the exercise, the first four notes are fine. But as you'll notice, if your pinky is curved, you'll miss this last note. It's literally not long enough to reach this last note. So what most beginners do is most beginners straighten their pinky to reach the note. And a straight pinky is a weak pinky and it's bad technique. And it leads to sloppy, choppy playing and this very uneven sound that you typically hear in a lot of beginners. It sounds something like this. Instead of the smooth. And some people call this weak pinky syndrome. But it's actually very, very easy to fix. All we do is whenever we're playing toward our pinky, we move our wrist down and out as we play. And as you can see, with our wrist over here, down and out, now our pinky can stay nice and curved and strong to play this G, and you don't get that weak pinky sound that a lot of beginners have. And then, as we move back towards our thumb, we rotate our wrists up and in to complete a circle. So as we move our wrists and do the whole exercise, our wrists will be making these circles down and out, up and in, it looks something like this. So instead of thinking about this exercise as playing notes with individual fingers, which sounds sloppy and choppy, instead you want to think of it as if you're playing the notes with your wrists and your fingers are simply transferring the weight from your wrists onto the keys. And it leads to the, a very smooth, even, and confident sound. And on top of that, this is the only way you're ever going to be able to play at really fast speeds and have a smooth sound. It's so crazy to me, I see all these videos on YouTube that give out these little finger exercises and they only show you the notes and not the technique to play them correctly. And so a lot of beginners, you know, they just memorize these kind of random series of notes and then they drill in bad technique habits that are really, really annoying and frustrating to correct later on. So be super diligent and make sure you're using proper technique right from the get-go. And of course, once you're done with the right hand, you can do the exact same thing with the left hand. So for the left hand, we're gonna start with our pinky on this C. And same thing, so it's just going to go up and down twice. And then repeat the same thing with your pinky on D, and then E, and then F, all the way up until you get to the higher C. 
of course, always using proper technique. Now, this exercise is simple, but very powerful, okay? It only takes like two minutes a day, but you'd be amazed on how much more smooth and confident and even students sound, even after just a few months of practicing this a couple minutes a day. All right, next up is step two, where I'm gonna show you a powerful exercise to make your chord changes in songs automatic and effortless. But before that, now would be a great time to download the cheat sheet. We're gonna be using it for the rest of the video. So click the link, enter your name and email, click submit, and you'll go to this page where you can download the cheat sheet here. And while you're there, you might as well also download the Close Chords Cheat Sheet as well as the 5-7 Motivation Method Goal Sheet. We're gonna be using both of those later on. Alright, so now that our fingers are nice and warmed up, we're going to cover a four minute practical exercise to drill chord progressions into your brain. And when I say practical, I mean we're going to use actual chord progressions that you find in real songs. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to a website called ultimate-guitar.com. And up here you can type in one of your favorite songs. So I'm going to use All of Me by John Legend. Find a version that has five stars, click on it, and if you scroll down you'll see all the chords in the entire song. Then simply click simplify down here to simplify the chords and then go through the chords and find the repeating chords. Now for most songs out there, they'll repeat the same four or five chords over and over. So for this song, as you can see, we have E minor, C, G, D, and then it repeats. E minor, C, G, D, E minor, C, G, D. Next, if you go to the close chords cheat sheet that you downloaded, go and find your four chords, E minor, C, G, and D. And if you want, you can even print off the cheat sheet and cut out the chords with the scissors and put them right on your piano. And now you have your chord progression. E minor, C, G, and D. Now the great part about the Close Chords Cheat Sheet is I designed it to automatically use inversions of the chords that are going to be automatically close together. That way you don't have to jump your hand around on the keyboard, you know, E minor, C, G, uh, D which is very challenging for beginners, and instead the chords are all gonna be right next to each other. So, E minor, C, G, D. Now if you don't know what a chord inversion is, for now don't worry about it, you can simply just follow the chords on the cheat sheet and they're gonna be correct for you automatically. Okay, so to learn this chord progression, don't just start randomly practicing. Instead you want to use the added chord strategy learning method to make it nice and easy for you. So here's how it works. First you're gonna take only the first two chords of the progression, E minor and C and you're gonna practice just those two chords over and over. So E minor, C, E minor, C, and so on and so forth. Now once you have those two chords kind of down pat, then you're gonna add the next chord, the G, onto the end. So it's gonna look like this. E minor, C, G, stop. E minor, C, G, stop and keep practicing that until you have it good. And then of course, once you have that good, add the final chord, R, D, onto the end so it's gonna look like this. E minor, C, G, D, and repeat. E minor, C, G, D. So once you have your right hand good, now we just add the left hand. Left hand is pretty simple, we're just gonna play the root note of each chord. So we're gonna play E, C, G, D, and repeat, E, C, G, D. And we put it together with our right hand. Again, we don't want to try to put it all together at the same time. It's going to be way too frustrating as a beginner. We want to use the added chord strategy. So first, we're going to start off just E minor to C. And just keep practicing this, E minor, C. Once that's good, we add the third chord, the G. So we have E minor, C, G. And then again, E minor, C, G. Practice that till it's good. And then finally, you'll practice E minor, C, G, D, all together. Now this is gonna go a couple days to probably get into your fingers, but once you have that good and it starts to feel automatic, you can start adding any rhythms to these chords and it's gonna sound good. So you could start playing 
E minor, C, G, D. And actually play the song. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in and you kicking me out. Now this is important. You don't have to do all the steps on day one. What I recommend doing is stick to one chord progression, one song a week, right? So maybe this week you start with this song, All of Me, and maybe day one you only work on the right hand. Then day two you add in the left hand, day three you get hands together, day four you can start adding the rhythms, and by day five you can play the song effortlessly. And think about it, even if you only learn one song a week, after a year you will be able to play over 50 songs. And it's actually a lot better than that because as you'll see, there's a lot of songs out there that actually use the exact same chords as other songs. So in reality, you'll probably be able to play hundreds of songs after only a year of practice and you could actually start playing gigs if you wanted to. It's a very powerful way of learning. All right, so next up we're gonna talk about an easy improvisation drill you can start using today even if you've never done any improv in your life. But first, if you like this style of teaching where I really go in depth into technique and all the learning strategies like the added chord strategy to make sure that you're really doing everything correctly and stopping bad habits before they start, if you could hit that that like button, I would really, really appreciate it. All right, the third and final section to this morning routine, I'm gonna show you a simple four minute per day improv drill that can drastically improve your improv skills over time. So for your left hand, it's very simple. Put your pinky on C and your thumb on G and simply alternate between these two notes. Like that. Then for your right hand, you can literally play any white notes on the keyboard and it's gonna sound good. Let me show you what I mean. And you can literally play any white notes on the keyboard, it's always gonna sound good. And that's it, just work this four minutes a day, make up whatever you want, you know, be creative, put some of your, your own energy, your own emotion into this. And as you do this week after week, month after month, you'll start to develop your own style, you know, your own kind of go-to riffs that you like to use when you improvise. All right, so next up, we're gonna talk about the five, seven motivation method, a system I developed that keeps even the most inconsistent practicer dialed in and motivated. But first, let me know in the comments, which exercise are you most excited to practice? Is it the five finger drill, is it the chord progressions, or is it the improvisation? Leave a comment and let me know. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you the five seven motivation method to keep you white hot motivated and on track. So if you pull up the five seven motivation method goal sheet, as you can see, we have our three exercises over here on top, and on the left side, we have weeks one through week 12. So when you sit down at the piano, after you practice each exercise, you put a tally mark in each of the boxes for week one. Then the second day you practice, you put another tally mark in the box. Now the goal is to get five tally marks in each box per week. Once you have five tally marks, you can cross off the box and you're good. Now, of course, if you can get seven tallies, one for each day of the week, even better, but the truth is, life is busy, and if you can only get five, it's no big deal, you're gonna be just fine. And as you practice this week after week, month after month, and you start filling in more and more of these boxes, and you start building more and more momentum, it's gonna be harder and harder to stop, because you're gonna feel so motivated, and you're gonna see how far you've come so far. And once you complete the 12 weeks of this routine, you're gonna be amazing and how much more smooth and confident and effortless your piano playing becomes. And please, please, I'm begging you to take the two minutes to print this thing off, tape it right up by your piano and track your progress. It's absolutely crazy to me to see the difference in the long-term consistency between students who use a goal sheet and students who don't use a goal sheet. And imagine how much more confident and smooth and effortless you're gonna be on the keys if you simply complete this one goal sheet. Oh, and by the way, if you like this very detailed style of teaching, Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notifications, especially if you're an adult beginner student. That's kind of my specialty. I'd really hate for you to miss out on a future video that could really, really change the trajectory of your piano journey. All right, so here's the link again to the cheat sheet one more time. Thanks a lot for watching. Peace out and happy practicing.